Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Ale. Welcome back to my world of stocks and welcome back to my monthly update series where we cover three specific topics. Number one, the current state of the economy and the stock market on a more macro level. And I give you my opinion on everything that's going on. Number two, we talk about what stocks I bought or sold over the past month, which was April, 2021. And of course, number three, what stocks I'm thinking about buying or selling this month here in May of this year. And of course, if you guys enjoy the series and you're enjoying the channel, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, it really helps the channel survive and grow, and it means a lot to me. But let's go ahead and start with topic number one. And of course, that's gonna be the current state of the economy and the stock market. And a few things that I definitely wanna make sure I cover in this month's video in particular, is the fact that uh, job numbers declined in April, and we're struggling to fill jobs right now. We're also having uh, a very real threat of inflation going into the future because we continue to spend and really plan to spend unbelievable amounts of money that many feel is unsustainable. And yet the stock market continues, continues to trade basically at all time highs, which is leading to the concern that we might be running into a correction or maybe even a crash going forward because there's kind of a disconnect between the market and how bad our economy is right now. So I'm gonna share my opinion on all those different things. Let's jump into it. Well, as always, I like to start by just giving you guys a quick update and a snapshot on the stock market. And yeah, once again, we're talking about trading very close to all time highs. The S&P 500 is up by over 100% in the past five years and practically at an all time high. The Dow Jones is a little less than that, but still up by over 90% and very close to an all time high as well. And then even though the tech heavy NASDAQ is technically seeing a very tiny dip here recently, it's actually still up the most out of the three at over 100%. 180% in the past five years. And not that there's anything wrong with the stock market going up, but when we turn to the economy, we really start to see a disconnect here. Job numbers just came in for April and it was the biggest miss that we've seen in 23 years. Economists were expecting around a million jobs added, but we only saw around 266,000. So like four times less than what we were expecting. On top of that, unemployment actually went up, which halted our recovery. And as if that wasn't bad enough, we still saw job openings go up despite people being unemployed, which means that all of the money that we're paying for unemployment benefits, at least in my opinion, is actually backfiring because it's decentivizing people from going back to work since many of them can actually just earn more money by staying home and collecting checks. Not to mention that many people are still too scared of the pepperoni to leave home and go to work and you even have schools that are not reopening fast enough, causing parents to have to stay home and take care of their kids rather than go back to work. All of it is really a mess in my opinion, and so far our response has been to just keep spending tons of money. According to the New York Times, we're on track now to spend around $6 trillion under President Biden. And I don't say that to speak negatively of Biden, I'm sure he's just trying to boost the economy, but this whole attitude of America to just keep spending our way out of this mess rather than getting people back to work, I mean, there's a real chance that it ends up badly and kind of destroying everything through unmanageable levels of debt and the hyperinflation that could follow, which also would destroy the savings of many people by devaluing our currency. I mean, I don't know how related this is, but you probably noticed that even cryptocurrencies have been skyrocketing recently. So there may be some worry that the dollar is going to start losing some of its value in the future. In fact, many publications have been putting out articles recently citing various economists and professionals that talk about how weak our economy is right now. And they warn about our rising debt levels and how that may lead to inflation and an eventual stock market crash. Personally, I don't try to predict the actual large crashes because I feel like it's impossible to time accurately and they're more of like a rare occurrence than anything else. But what I do like to pay attention to is when stocks are overvalued in general, since it means less deals for me out in the market and a more common like dip or correction is probably needed or may be coming. Right now, our Schiller P ratio is more than double the average and typically when it gets close to 25 or higher, that's usually when you start to see some big drops or even crashes in the market because prices are just way too high compared to reality. And granted, we've been above 25 for several years now, but 
we've been stretching it pretty damn high at over 37 right now. So I think it's perfectly reasonable to expect some volatility. Still, it's a little hard for me to envision a big market crash happening anytime soon, just because V shots are really ramping up a lot. We're seeing restri restrictions start to be lifted and businesses, more and more businesses are opening back up. So I think it's a little easier to envision some growth rather than a lot of deterioration. I think if a big market crash does happen, I think it would probably be lagged a little bit into the future once inflation really starts to take a bigger hold on the economy and things kind of start collapsing because of bad policies. I'm not saying that's gonna happen. I don't, I don't wanna make that prediction, but I just think that if it does, my gut tells me that it's probably going to be a couple more years or a few years into the future rather than happening anytime soon. In the shorter term, I think it's more reasonable to expect the stock market to be kind of stagnant, but still in an upward trajectory. I do kind of feel like a correction will happen this year if I had to make a prediction. I feel like it'll probably happen this year, maybe early into next year, but I do think that we do need some dips in the market. However, I think we'll recover from that and it'll ultimately have been a good buying opportunity. In the meantime, I think buying more strategically with a little bit more caution, continuously adding to my cash position, all those things make a lot of sense to me. And then if some big dips come into the market, then that's when I really go in and buy a lot heavier. Again, though, I'm still personally buying stocks. I'm just doing it in smaller amounts and being more strategic about it, which brings us to part number two. What stocks did I buy or sell this past month in April? And actually did do some trimming, some very rare trimming. And uh, I also did some purchases, made some purchases as well. So let's go ahead and talk about those now. And then we'll transition over to what I plan to do this month here in May. Okay, so starting with any sales, I did actually trim my position in Visa, ticker symbol V, by just a little bit. And there's not a huge reason for this other than a couple of smaller reasons. For one, I wanted some extra liquidity because I am moving into a new place and building out a YouTube studio. So I just wanted some extra funds for that without tapping into my other savings since practically all of my stocks are up huge right now, Visa included. And then the other reason is that I just wanted to trim my position a little because it was becoming larger than some of my other stocks in my portfolio that I do actually like a lot more. So I went ahead and sold a few shares at $236 each, which at the time was an all-time high for them. And these mostly came from my Robinhood account, although I do actually own a lot more shares in my E-Trade account, which I am still up by over 60% on. And don't get me wrong, I do still like my Visa position. They command the most market share in credit cards, debit cards, and payments volume on them around the world. So they're a very solid company to hold on to long term, but I'm just not a huge fan of finance or even like bank related stocks because I do worry about how the market might be disrupted in the future, either with like a weakening economy or inflation or cryptocurrencies or whatever else. So I just usually keep these type of stocks limited in my portfolio. And because I'm already up by so much on my position, I just figured that it was a good time to trim a little and take some profits. Moving on though to purchases, I did actually buy three different stocks in April. One was a growth stock and the other two were dividend stocks. Now the growth stock was Alibaba, ticker symbol BABA. -A, and this is a stock that I've talked a lot about lately because I feel that it is extremely undervalued right now. They're the leading Chinese e-commerce company at over 55% market share and yet they continue to put up huge growth rates of like 40% this year and still over 30% next year expected as well. Yet the stock is actually trading near a 52 week low, mostly because of regulatory concerns that I do feel are overblown. To me, the stock looks super attractive right now. So I did go ahead and buy some shares at around $228 each, which is actually higher than where the stock is trading today. So I will most likely keep buying here pretty aggressively. Next up, I did uh, pick up some more of my uh, two, some of, two of my favorite dividend stocks, I should say, and those are AT&T and Verizon. Now, these are also stocks that I've talked a lot about recently, so I'll keep it very short and to the point, but AT&T, you guys know I always buy this one at less than $30 a share, so I stay true to my word, and I did go ahead and purchase some more shares at literally just a couple pennies below that. Since then, though, the stock has climbed back up a little to around $32 a share, so I probably won't be buying any more shares at this time since it's already such a large position of mine, but even here the dividend is still yielding about 6.5%, which isn't bad at all. I just like it under 30 because that's where you typically get around 7% or more. By the way, just to give you guys a quick update on this one, the stock is performing better right now because HBO Max has been performing 
performing very well, despite only being available in the United States, but they're projecting that by 2025, it'll easily surpass 100 million subscribers, which will make it much more competitive with the likes of other juggernauts like Disney+, Plus, Netflix, or Hulu. And so far, they've been doing a pretty good job of adding enticing content like the new Mortal Kombat movie, the Snyder Cut of Justice League, and even more hits like Godzilla vs. Kong. So I'm excited to see where this platform goes in the future. Moving on though to Verizon, it's a fairly similar stock in that it's also a value dividend play with strong cash flows, and I was able to pick up some more shares at right around $56 a share at around the end of the month. Since then, the stock has climbed by a couple of dollars, but really anywhere less than like 60, I do feel is a pretty good price because you get the valuation pretty low. You also get a dividend of around four to 5%. I think I'm good for now though, because I've already done enough buying in recent months, but Verizon is a stock that I do like around these levels. Okay, so that was the past month in April. What about here in May? What stocks am I thinking about picking up? Well, like I said before, Alibaba is a stock that I continue to feel is extremely undervalued and I can almost guarantee you that I'll definitely be picking up some shares here in May. On top of that though, there's two big giant companies that uh, I'm thinking about buying here in May and one of them is a stock that I haven't purchased in a pretty long time and the other one is a stock that I don't think I've ever owned, but I'm very interested in starting to dip my toes into it uh, this month here as well. So let's go ahead and cover those now, and then we'll wrap up the video. First up here, that's going to be Microsoft, ticker symbol MSFT. And as you guys know, this one has long been my number one largest stock, but because of Tesla's meteoric rise, which was my second largest stock, those two have switched and that leaves me wanting to buy a little more Microsoft right now to try to get it back to number one or at least a little closer to it. And if you only look at the stock chart, there's not a very compelling reason to say why I'm buying it since it's basically trading at an all time high, but you have to remember what type of stock this is. First of all, they rarely ever dip, so it's usually best to just keep buying the stock and buy even heavier on the very rare opportunity that they do actually drop. And there's many good reasons for that. Financials are incredible. You're talking over $140 billion of revenue last year, of which like 40 to 50 billion went straight to net income profit. And yet they're still expected to grow by double digit rates in each of the next two years. Last quarter, gap sales even grew by 19%, while net income soared by a massive 44%. And I won't go into all of their amazingly dominant products and services, but one thing I do want to quickly touch on is their Xbox gaming division that has been on fire lately and really think it has a very good shot of being a world leader in gaming with explosive growth over the long term. Last quarter, Xbox content and services was the third highest growth product in the company at over 30% growth, and that doesn't even include their skyrocketing hardware sales from their new consoles that are practically sold out everywhere you look. Instead, those sales were driven in large part by their Netflix-like service for video games called Xbox Game Pass that has already reached 23 million active subscribers. Couple that with the future growth of xCloud that uses their Azure cloud computing platform to stream video games on lower powered machines like even your smartphone, and I think Microsoft is in an amazing position to take full advantage of the giant and high growth gaming market well into the future. And again, that's on top of everything else that they already dominate, so I'm happy to be buying the stock even at these higher levels. Now the other giants that I'm considering is actually a stock that I don't think I've ever owned myself other than my ex-girlfriend who I was helping I was helping her kind of manage her portfolio, but that's going to be uh, Apple, ticker symbol AAPL. And like Microsoft, it's not an easy stock to justify at its current high prices since it is up by over 400% over the past five years. But when you start to dig a little deeper, you can actually find some things to really like about Apple. For one, they did have a little dip recently, leaving them down by about 13% from their all-time high. And while that doesn't really count for much after having you know, already skyrocketed by so much in recent years, What's kind of surprising about Apple is that their valuation isn't actually as high as you might expect. In fact, their non-GAAP P ratio is 20% cheaper than the sector. That's pretty crazy. Even their non-GAAP forward PEG ratio that takes future growth into account, even that is still slightly cheaper as well. Now, granted, there's some cons to Apple, which is why I've never bought them myself, 
For one, they've been very dependent on iPhone sales, which leaves them prone to cyclicality. For example, their sales grew huge in 2018, then actually declined in 2019. They had very little growth in 2020, and now they're expected to skyrocket in growth in 2021, and then come back down to much smaller growth in 2022. So you can see like the cyclicality of it and why the stock would be volatile at times. But for the valuation, you gotta appreciate that you're getting such a gigantically massive company. This year, you're probably talking over $300 billion in sales and $60 billion in just net income alone. I mean, show me another company that is doing these kind of numbers and still trades cheaper than the sector. That's pretty incredible. And again, I don't like how dependent they are on iPhones, but they're actually doing a pretty good job of expanding into not just accessories like the Apple Watch, but more importantly, services that people are becoming more dependent on across all of their different Apple products, which, by the way, they just hit over 660 60 million subscriptions on those services. That's a lot. But really the reason why I want this stock the most is probably because, gotta admit, I have a gut feeling that their massive cash pile of over $200 billion, depending on how you calculate it, I think it's gonna be used to make some huge moves in the future that will probably shock investors that don't even see it coming. Like for example, we know that they're already like li literally building an Apple car. And I'm not saying that Apple is gonna like all of a sudden be the next Tesla or something crazy like that. But what I am saying is don't be surprised if you see Apple use its massive size to all of a sudden start disrupting a big market that you might not even see coming. Overall, when looking at Apple, I just think this might be the time for me to start dipping my toes. Okay, so that just about does it for this month's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what stocks you're buying or selling down below. I'd love to read those comments and uh, may even talk about some of those stocks in the future. Hope you're all doing well out there. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Thank you for all the support. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.